Monica Lewis says she got into show business out of self-defense. Her entire family was musical. And when she was 17, she was out to prove who she was, too. Benny Goodman needed a singer for the band, so she auditioned, got the job. And then, of course, records and radio and nightclubs. And then she met a fellow named Jennings Lang, who has become a big television producer. They got married, and for the last 25 years, uh, Monica decided to vote her time to raising their family. She is singing again now. She's got a new album out, Never Let Me Go. Monica, it's nice to see you. Well, it's nice to see you. What was it like after 25 years of not singing a lot? I gather you didn't sing a lot during that time, except... Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Okay. <laughs> but to go into one of these newfangled recording studios after the way you did it 25 years ago. Well, it's a little intimidating for the first few minutes because um, there's so much electronic stuff around and there are panels that look like airplanes and, and, and you know, you say, gosh, is this going to be okay? Because you're used to singing live and, you know, but it, it's fine because after sing? five minutes, you know, you know that it's, it's music. How did you sound to yourself on the big speakers? And all? Well, I... Uh, I'm quite used to my own voice, and it was so awful for so long because I hadn't sung in so long. You know, yeah. 25 years is a long time, but it's a quarter of a century. And my very last album was cut and released when I was pregnant with my son, Rocky, whom you met, who just had his 24th birthday. So... Um, and looks like Rocky. Yeah, go ahead. Isn't he cute? He's macho. Anyway, but he's adorable, and he just got his director's card. Great. He was accepted. Anyway, uh, the important thing is that after about 20 years, when Rocky was quite sufficient mm -hmm. and Mommy wasn't needed for so many things, I started to vocalize again. And I got a classical coach, an opera coach. Right. Being an old jazz singer, you know, you'd say, why? Well, there was nothing there. I sounded very deep and very bassy, and like someone who had yelled a lot for a lot of years, you know, come in for lunch and stuff like that. Right. And the flexibility wasn't there. So I worked very hard with her. Then I got a jazz pianist and started singing again. And uh, feels pretty good. it feels wonderful. What was it like with Benny Goodman? I mean, what was your life like? What was, what was your week like? What was your month like when you were with the band? Well, there's a great misnomer about my uh, being with Benny Goodman for a very long time. I was with him two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah, because he wanted to take me on the road. I, I auditioned at the Astor Roof, and uh, he said, come to work that night. I had to borrow a dress, and I started that mm -hmm. night. And uh, then in two weeks, uh, he asked me to go on the road, and my folks wouldn't let me go. Well, you're only, what, 17? Yeah. So I never did get to do all those uh, bus trips and one-nighters. I did years of one-nighters and bus trips, but by myself as Later. a soloist, yeah. When, now, sometimes some people from Metro, from Metro Golden Mayor, mm -hmm. right, came in and, and that changed your whole life. What did they say to you or what did they offer you or what did they... They uh, heard me at the Mocambo, which was a... Um, nightclub in Hollywood before everyone's time I guess but everything I did was before it wasn't everyone's that time. long yes, ago it, was. no, it wasn't <laughs> anyway yeah. they came in and offered me a contract yeah. now in those days which was 1950 uh, a contract was really a big thing you know to get a contract with a major studio was very big except you didn't know that you were giving up everything how so? Uh, well, they did not allow you to do personal appearances, which is what I've been doing and earning a lot of money. Right. And um, they didn't allow you to do television. Right. They didn't allow you to do anything but come to classes and be on call for publicity and then assign you to a picture, maybe. Well, what and, did, well what at the time, uh, Vic Damone and I were contemporaries, and we both were signed the same week. And right. we were allegedly going to do a modern version of the Merry Widow yeah. <clears throat> with hip songs and all that, but using the basic story. Right. And uh, Lana Turner, who yeah. was a very big star at the time, uh, had uh, married one of her husbands, I think it was Bob Topping, I'm mm -hmm. not sure, right. and uh, had uh, said that she uh, elected not to work for a while and wanted to have a child and so forth. So I was actually bought, and I mean bought, <laughs> like you, you were bought like a commodity, you know, and they had this great passion for grooming and changing you. And so I was done up to be Lana Turner, 
And we were going to do this thing by singing modern and jazz and so forth. And then she decided to come back to work. So now I had all this publicity and looking, you know, oh, I, I can't tell you how exactly la they made me they look. They look like Lana And Turner. Lana's got blue eyes and I don't. And, you know, it was just really weird. But they made me look like her, which was great because she was gorgeous. And I was real thrilled with this look that they right. gave me. And then they said, sorry, this week. You're no longer Lana Turner, now you're Janie Powell. So they cut the hair short and little curls and ringlets and lots of dimples and all of this stuff. And I went home to my parents and I said, you know, I knew who I was when I got here, but I haven't a clue. And I wound up seeing a doctor about this because there was an so identity really crisis that was very, very difficult for me. And knocked you for a loop. Big loop. And you, but you were able to snap out of it. Well, I, I'm very resilient, David. <laughs> <laughs> what is, now, you've done the Sting 2, right, with Jackie Gleason. Yeah. I'm back on the screen again. How did you feel about that? Well, that was my own uh, decision. First of all, my husband produced the picture. Oh. <laughs> That's how I get these Nepotism. jobs. Nepotism. <laughs> oh. Not the record, but the, the picture. And right. uh, the, his director, Jeremy Paul Kagan, said, uh, would you come down and pre-record the song for us? Uh, they're doing a 1940 society orchestra All right. so you're going and to sing, I yeah. said yeah I'll do the pre-record and I'd like to be the consultant for a young girl who teach her how to sh uh, stand up and snap her fingers and clap her hands and do all the things that we used to do and uh, he said why don't you do it and I said you cannot photograph me as a young girl 1940 I'm going to be 60 in May he said I promise you a long shot I'll be it'll be the longest shot you ever saw I said, you just have to keep your word, though, because I don't want to embarrass my husband or anybody looking ridiculous. It was a very, very long shot. <laughs> Were you sad? Did he keep his word? He kept his word. Wow. But I did do the singing, and I had a good time. How far are you going to keep making records? What are you going to do? You know? Well, I just hope so, because I love to sing, mm -hmm. and I love making records, and uh, I'm hoping that Never Let Me Go for Applause Records, I can do that plug, yeah, can sure. I? Uh, will be something that uh, not only adults will love because it is an adult kind of record but I'm hoping that the youngsters and since I'm surrounded by them a lot with Rocky at Home uh, they all seem to like it. The rhythm section sensational and we have Tom Scott and Lee Rittenauer and all these marvelous young jazz fellows on the date Good and luck my uh, oldest son yeah. produced the record, who is... Uh, you got the whole family working. Got That's everybody good. That's good. working. Everybody working. working. Monica, good to see you. Good luck it's to lovely you. to see you. Don't sit on the apple. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back in just a minute.